Hi, welcome to iFlip for Math, MathCast Lesson 5-2, Estimating Quotients with Two-Digit Divisors. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by George Washington Carver. Education is the key to unlock the golden door of freedom. Our learning goal tonight is when dividing by two-digit divisors, use compatible numbers to make it easier to estimate a quotient. I chose George Washington Carver because he is an early inventor, scientist, and teacher. And just, he, he was so fast at figuring things out and had such just an eye to solve problems. And so I think he's a great role model for us. Our individual lesson learning goals today are to know your multiplication facts. That's always going to make lessons like this easier. Also know that estimation, anytime you hear the word estimation or estimate, it means you're going to find out about how many times a number can be divided by another number in this lesson. Don't work the actual division problem. That's not going to be correct. The idea is to save yourself the trouble of working the problem. You just want an idea of about how many. The next step is to round the divisor to the greatest place value position. That's the first thing you're going to do. And then you'll easily be able to find a compatible number for the dividend, and that will make it all easier. Our vocabulary tonight um, is estimation, is the word, and that means to use rounding and compatible numbers to find out about how many times a dividend can be divided by a divisor. And our next term is compatible numbers. Remember, those are numbers that can be divided easily using mental math in this case. Sometimes they're multiplied, but tonight they're going to be divided. And those are some great pictures of George Washington Carver in his research lab as he is trying to solve problems for farmers. Here is our example problem. We're gonna estimate using compatible numbers. Um, I thought it was really cool that George Washington Carver, he was the one who taught um, tobacco farmers and cotton farmers that they needed to rotate their crops so that their soil wouldn't get worn out. And the way he taught them to do that was by growing peanuts in between. And they were getting irritated and frustrated because they had too many peanuts. So he spent this week just crazily in his lab trying to figure out all of these things you could do with peanuts to make with peanuts so that you could sell them for a profit. So he invented peanut butter and soap and shampoo and just all of these different things. And then peanut farmers, or excuse me, the regular cotton farmers became very excited about their peanut crop. So now we're back to estimating using compatible numbers. 412 divided by 84. Let's check out how we did this one. So I went ahead and wrote the numbers the way we write them to solve them for mental math. Instead of putting them in the house, we write them this way. And this is the divisor because this is the number that it's being divided by, 412 divided by 84. So I'm going to round this to the greatest place value position. 84 rounded to the greatest place value position is 80. It's closer to 80 than 90. Now, as I look for numbers that I can easily divide by eight. I'm thinking numbers close to 41. I know that, let's see, 40, eight will go into 40 five times, and 40 is pretty close to 41, so let's use that. So I'm gonna write 40 below it. And then I'm gonna change that two to a zero, just like when we were using compatible numbers and multiplication. So these are the numbers. That's the number that I kind of changed it to. That's the compatible number. And now I can divide really easily. So 40 divided by eight is five. And now I have my zeros. Now, if I add both of those zeros, my problem is I'm going to have a bigger number than I started out with. So I'm going to use the battle of the zero strategy to get rid of those. So this guy's going to capture this guy and I have no zeros. 400 divided by 80 is five. And that's a little tricky. Just know that if you had added those two zeros, your number would be bigger than your dividend, which should never happen. That would make no sense. You can't divide 400 men into 80 groups and end up with 500 men in each group. So think about that as you are using your estimation. Here's our first practice problem. 288 divided by 37. Remember, we're not doing a real division problem. We're finding out about how many times 37 goes into 288. 
So work that out using mental math strategies and the battle of the zero strategies, and then you can push play when you're ready. Did you estimate seven? Let's see how we did that. So remember the first step in using compatible numbers to find out about how many times 288 would be divided by 37 is to round the divisor, which is what it's divided by, to the greatest place value position. So if I round this, it's going to be 40 because 37 is closer to 40 than to 30. Now I'm gonna look at the first two digits and I need a number that is close to 28 that four will divide evenly into and four actually divides perfectly into 28 because four times seven is 28. So I'm gonna rewrite 28 below that and change that eight to a zero. Because now I'm ready to do mental math to divide. 28 divided by four is seven and I have to do the battle of the zeros. This guy captures this guy, so this is my estimated answer, and it's a pretty good one. Number two, 2,964 divided by 73. Let's try that one. Push play when you're ready. Did you write 40? Let's see how we worked that. So we're going to round our divisor to the greatest place value position, and seven rounded is 70 or 73 rounded is 70 because 73 is closer to 70 than 80 and so that's our underlying digit now over here you're not used to seeing four digits here but we're still going to look at those first two we need a number close to 29 that 7 will divide evenly into and we actually just used that in the last problem we know 28 is divisible by 7 because 7 times 4 is 28 and we're going to replace both of these with zeros. So now we can use our mental math strategies 28 divided by 7 is 4 because 4 times 7 is 28 and then this guy goes to battle with this guy and captures him and only this guy is left to be knighted and standing next to the royal family so the answer would be about 40. Here is our practice word problem for tonight. George Washington Carver is making up a batch of peanut butter. He makes 583 ounces of peanut butter. If he can fit 34 ounces in each jar about, that's our key word, how many jars will he need to buy for all of his peanut butter? So we definitely want to kind of make sure we're overestimating in this case because we don't want to be left with extra peanut butter left over. But let's go ahead and try that and see what your answer is. Push play when you're ready. Did you estimate about 20 jars? Let's see how we did that. So I'm going to round to the greatest place value position in my divisor and that gives me 30. Remember rounding is find your place, look next door, five or greater, add one more. And I didn't add one more because it wasn't five or greater. Now, I'm going to look at actually just, this is kind of different. Instead of the first two digits, I can actually look at that first digit and say, what number is close to five that can be easily divided by three or evenly divided by three? And it's six. So then I can just turn those other two digits to zeros. And now I can use my mental math strategy. Six divided by three is two because two times three is six. Then this guy captures this guy, which leaves me with one zero left over. So my answer is 20. Now going back to that problem, is 20 jars really enough for all of his peanut butter? The actual division problem when you divide it is 17 jars with five ounces of peanut butter left over. Now in the real world, you can't just leave those five ounces out in a bowl just going to waste. So you're going to need an extra jar. So we'll put that fi those five ounces in another jar, which will mean that we will be using 18 jars. So if he goes to buy 20 jars, he's going to have plenty of jars for his peanut butter. It's time to challenge yourself. Mrs. Gooding has 3,147 stamps in her collection. She has 17 stamps that have George Washington Carver on them. She is placing her stamps in an album with pages that each hold 42 stamps. 
Using compatible numbers, find the closest estimate for how many pages she will need to display all of her stamps. Show your work and explain your answer in your flip journal and come back tomorrow. We're going to go over this in class. So you can check your answer in the back of the room, but then if you're not sure how I got that answer, we'll go over it. Finishing up, go ahead and review your learning goals. Make sure you really understand what we were doing. We were using strategies that we've learned earlier this week, like the battle of the zeros and rounding and using compatible numbers. Go ahead and write down if you're at a level one, two, or three in your learning. That will help us decide tomorrow how much help you're going to need. And then in your flip journal, write down any questions you still have. Yummy peanut butter, you've completed lesson 5-2, estimating quotients with two-digit divisors. I'll see you tomorrow.